And welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagan, and we're going to continue looking at the results of price ceiling. So we said uh, if the government comes along and they set a price ceiling here, here at PC, then the price cannot get bid up. Consumers will try to bid up the price because the quantity of demand is greater than the quantity supplied. There's a there's a shortage in the market. Whenever there's a shortage, uh, consumers are trying to get their hands on these uh, few items that are available. And to do that, they start to bid up the price. They start to bid up the price, but they can't bid up the price because they're banging up against that price ceiling. Government says, no, the price cannot be above uh, whatever that number is that they've chosen. So we said, what are the results of that? Uh, well, the result is, of course, there's going to be a shortage, but there's also going to be non-price rationing. Since since consumers can't bid up the price to figure out who's going to get these relatively small number of, uh, of goods that are available, we're going to have to have some other way of determining who, who gets who gets to have those goods. So, you know, may, maybe, maybe the good is... Maybe the good is, uh, let, let's say they put a price ceiling on milk. The price cannot go above uh, some price so that, you know, families can, avo- can afford to purchase milk. Uh, so, so if the government were to do that, if they were to set a price ceiling like that, then um, and, and consumers could not bid up the price, well, then there'd be a shortage of milk. There wouldn't be enough. Uh, so, you know, two people will come into a, into a grocery store and there'd only be one gallon of milk left. And they, and they both want that gallon of milk. And who? Who's going to get it? Uh, you know, normally you'd bid up the price to see which one of those two uh, people is going to get it, but but you can't do that because of the price ceiling. So so how is the store owner going to decide uh, who gets it? Well, one way of doing that is discrimination. Uh, so this encourages discrimination. So uh, maybe the person is uh, is prejudiced in some way, and so they choose to you know not sell to certain races. They choose to not sell the milk to you know minority groups or whatever the case is. And and so you get uh, discrimination. So you know we 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 don't we don't want that kind of of, of behavior. And uh, and price ceilings. Well, they I don't know if I want, quite want to say that they encourage that behavior, but they they it, it often will result in that behavior. I'd be a better way to better way to say it. Uh, and, and and so that would be one possible way of rationing resources. Another possible way of rationing resources is the buyers might do favors for the sellers. The buyers might do favors for the sellers. The, the, the two buyers come in and there's only one gallon of milk left and the buyers, since they can't bid up the price, they could start, you know, Offering favors for the sellers, you know, if you sell me the milk, I'll, I'll, I'll mow your grass for you. I don't know, whatever. And you start uh, uh, offering favors uh, to the sellers. Another possibility is the seller will just uh, lower the quality of the good. Uh, so now uh, maybe a milk, maybe the milk, they just water it down. Right? They take a, take a gallon of milk and then water it down so much to make it into to two gallons of milk. And every, then, then the two people that come in, they, they both get milk. But it's like this watered down stuff. It uh, doesn't taste good. So you could lower the quality of the good. Um, that would be one way to do it. Lower the quality of good. But you could also you know, redefine the size of the good. So maybe there's a price ceiling on on bread, on a loaf of bread, and and the price ceiling says that you know a loaf of bread can't cost more than two dollars. That would be the price ceiling. Well, maybe a, a loaf of bread used to be uh, 15 uh, pieces of bread. Uh, now I'm only going to include maybe 10 pieces of bread, if the price ceiling is set at two dollars. It's the only way that I can make money is is by uh, making smaller loaves of bread. So so. You may get both a decrease in the size of the good, or you may get a decrease in the quality of the good. Maybe if we're talking about bread, it wouldn't be very high quality bread. They remove some of the better ingredients, uh, you know, put in filler ingredients, uh, whatever the case might be. And so these would all lower the quality of the good. Uh, another possibility, number four, is you get lines. Okay, and that, that's a very common one. So in the 1970s, when the government set price ceilings on gasoline, how are we going to decide who gets gasoline? How, how are we going to make that decision? Well, people end up 
waiting in lines to get gas and, and and you get these long gas lines wandering around the block as people are sitting in line uh, waiting to get gas and uh, oftentimes by the time they would get up to the pump gas is gone because there's a there's a shortage of it so first come first serve would 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 be a way to uh, ration the resources, a way to determine who's going, who's going to get the good. And then finally, you may get the development of black markets, where people just, uh, they just begin violating the law, where they, they start selling goods under the table at the actual equilibrium price. So you have the actual price ceiling is in place that the government's created, but people are buying and selling at, uh, at, at illegal prices in the black market, kind of under the table with cash, things like this. And and so let's just look at, at one example of this very quickly. This this graph down here uh, is an example of of a good where there's a where there's a price ceiling and that is uh, the organ market. So organs, it's it's illegal to to sell organs uh, at the time that I'm doing this video. So it's so it's kind of like they've set a price ceiling down here where the price is zero. That's like the price ceiling. You're not allowed to, to buy and sell organs for above uh, zero dollars. So that means that the quantity demanded, we would predict based on this model, quantity of organs demanded would be very, very high, but the quantity of organs supplied would be very, very low. And uh, the data that I have here on this graph to kind of support that analysis, this comes from uh, The Economist magazine. They have an article from uh, June 15th, uh, 2013 and uh, they included this chart and on this chart this is the people waiting for organ transplants you can kind of think of this as the demand and then down here is the organ transplants that are actually being performed you can kind of think of that as the supply and then in between here you can kind of think of this distance between the two as that's the shortage, and you can see that the shortage is getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time. So when you set a price ceiling of zero, you're going to get very high shortages. And, and then this begs the question, should, should some, something change? Should we get rid of the price ceiling? Uh, should it be legal to buy and sell organs at, at some equilibrium price? And, and I don't I don't have the answer to that question. There would be all kind of moral questions. but But the economics point is that if you set price ceilings you're going to get a shortage in the market and then you're going to get some amount of this non-price rationing that's going to happen okay that's what we expect to see that's what we predict that we will see uh, when you have price ceilings this has been Mr. Hagen on another podcast thanks for joining me and we'll see you on the next podcast